hands up if you're in trouble. Everton and Tottenham both need to get the goods at Goodison. Waves of discontent too at the Emirates. Arsenal have to hold off the pack when Wolves attack. But the gestures are all celebratory as far as the Foxes are concerned. Free-scoring Leicester travel to Crystal Palace. The weekend opens at Bournemouth with Manchester United hoping to build on recent results. Leaders Liverpool head to Villa Park and second place Manchester City are at home to struggling Southampton. Did anyone picture this? The start of November and both Everton and Tottenham in the bottom half of the Premier League table. The bosses experiencing the negatives of managing a club with such high expectations. I think they know that um, when they went to them football clubs that uh, there's a huge expectation. Um, and with the expectation becomes pressure. And if you can do as a manager to relieve pressure is win. You know, you're always right if you win football matches. Um, if you don't, then there's always people out there willing to give their opinion. You have to believe in what you're doing, stick to your gun, um, and hopefully you come out the other side. Marco Silva briefly saw the light at the end of the tunnel at Brighton, 10 minutes away from a first away win in nearly seven months, and yet they left with nothing. An EFL Cup quarter-final place has been secured since, but five losses in six in the league is form that needs addressing. The last month was a difficult one for us. We had a few defeats uh, on Premier League games. But we are working really hard to improve and to show our best football. And after our victory against Watford, it's really good to keep building our confidence. Everton two relegation zone and Tottenham two points above them. Mauricio Pochettino's team briefly troubled the leaders Liverpool, but the 2-1 defeat at Anfield was merely the latest spike on the road. 11 away matches without a win is Spurs' worst run in 19 years. The Tottenham players would look themselves in the mirror and say they're not doing enough at the moment. You know, the large majority of them, I thought some of the criticism, certainly to Danny Rose, was spiteful and a little bit unfair. Um, Aurier's not been great since he's been at Tottenham. He's found it very difficult to settle. He's had a lot of injuries, Delhi, so he's got to get over that. He's got to play with uh, consistency. He will turn it around. It's just a matter of time. We've got a squad and, and a team of players and, and, a, and, a, and a group of coaching staff as well where when things do go not so well and it doesn't go to, to plan, you know, we, everybody still fights, everybody still works hard. We keep, you know, we treat each other the same way and, and it's, uh, it's important to keep that because, you know, you can really show and, and see people's characters in these moments. But if Tottenham are looking for a comfort blanket, they need peer no further than the form book for matches against Everton. Kane is loosely marked and completes number six. Spurs haven't lost to their hosts in their last 13 matches, so might find this week's trip to Merseyside a more profitable journey. I think it's a situation that um, only we can uh, fix uh, winning games, and we know very well, and it's our responsibility to deliver a very good job and very good uh, performance on Sunday against a very good team like, uh, like Everton. Um, trying to win because it's going to be the best medicine to, to fix all. Against these type of teams, in one moment they can change and, uh, our job and what we want to do, that they don't change against us. We want to win the game, we have to show that desire uh, at Goodison last the next Sunday um, because at Goodison we are getting stronger every single match. The results show that for us and we have to keep the same. So two managers and two clubs needing more time to turn their seasons around. They've created an image of themselves, but now need to find a way to hold on to it. So far, so good, says Jurgen Klopp. Supporters may well dream, but he's attempting to manage expectations on Merseyside. Liverpool sit top of the pile, six points clear of Manchester City. Over the past few seasons, the Reds have played some scintillating football, but they've added and a real ability to turn games around. Consider last week's comeback victory over Tottenham. No side with 28 points after 10 games has not gone on to lift the Premier League trophy. The manager may well have more expectation management ahead. Well, we got uh, 
We don't look at what Manchester City are doing. We just focus on ourselves. It's something the coach has instilled in all of us. The key thing is to win all our matches. The coach takes care of what happens in the long term, but we just focus on this being a normal match with no pressure. And hopefully Saturday against Villa will take us forward. Last week Manchester City, this week Liverpool. Aston Villa are in the thick of it. The Midlands club, defeated at the Etihad, probably predicted little from these two fixtures, and their respectable start sees them 15th, three points clear of trouble, and through to the next round of the EFL Cup. Captain Jack Grealish is fit again, good news for head coach Dean Smith, and perhaps for England, the midfielder appears to be in contention for international selection. His teammates have claimed he could become the world's best player. Right now, it's all eyes on Raheem Sterling. He's sparkled for Manchester City this season, an ever-growing predatory instinct, but a provider of goals too. It's hard to argue that Sterling isn't part of football's elite. Seven Premier League goals already ahead of facing Southampton this weekend. He's definitely one of the best players in the world. You know, I can definitely say that. You know, he's he's strong, he's quick. He knows where the goal is. He can assist. You know, there's <laughs> there's not much you can find that he hasn't got. And you know, he's really got his head down over the years and you know worked very hard. You can clearly see it on the training pitch to to get an understanding of how you know Pep wants to play. Um, you know, he's he's took that in storm. So credit to him. It'll be Saints' second trip to the blue half of Manchester in a matter of days. Ralph Haas and Hootel's team knocked out of the EFL Cup at the Etihad on Tuesday and somehow need to find confidence after the chaos of the 9-0 home defeat to Leicester City. Solace could be hard to come by at the reigning champions, though. The number of goals conceded in their last two trips to Manchester City? Nine. Defiance on their faces, a look of focus about the team, and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer maintains a positive demeanour, justified perhaps after Manchester United's impressive 2-1 win at Chelsea in the EFL Cup, a third successive victory in all competitions. Marcus Rashford's double at Stamford Bridge means it's now four goals in as many matches, but a knee injury puts his involvement in doubt. So Anthony Martial's return to fitness is a huge boost for a side looking to improve its goal tally. Solskjaer, though, must still cope with Paul Pogba, who's sidelined until December at least. But, all things considered, United travel to Bournemouth in brighter spirits than of late. It's so much easier when you get confidence or momentum by, by some results. And at the moment, the boys look like they play more on instinct than uh, having that extra... Uh, split second to think. In football it's not very far from uh, failure to success or uh, the other way around. Is it a sign of the host's successes or United's failings that Bournemouth are level on points with their visitors? The latter when you consider that the Cherries are winless in four league games without scoring in their last three matches. Eddie Howe's man hoping the sky's clear at the vitality. Season two of the Unai Emery Arsenal project has been watchable, but for fans of the show, a little predictable. Yes, there's been twists, but the Gunners are fifth, so no further forward than the end of season one. Arsenal have blown a two-goal lead. An amazing comeback from Crystal Palace here. Some Arsenal fans actually cheering as they take off uh, their captain, Granit Xhaka. Wow, that is not good at all. Well, I think the fans um, will, will read um, his, will see his statement, read his statement, and they'll, have, they'll sympathise. 50% um, probably sympathise, 50% may not. Maybe it might be even more, 75%, 25 or, or, or vice versa. The fact is, is that fans respond to performances. If you perform well and they see you're trying and you're performing well enough for them to think, yeah, OK, yeah, we do forget. That's the way you get fans back on side. It's a reason to make sure you don't miss the next episode. The Emirates Stadium has actually been the stage for the bulk of Arsenal's points so far, but this is still a club that loves a good performance too. 
there is real frustration at Arsenal. It's not just about the results, it's about the way that football is being played. I think that Arsenal fans expect an awful lot from their team. You know, they've had 22 years of high level of success under Arsene Wenger and just winning games or grinding out draws, it's not enough if you're a manager of Arsenal. You've got to do it with a certain style. When you recover or you come back with a game with a, a good performance, they applaud the players, applaud the team. And this is our objective. But our objective now is to model uh, that match to win, connect with the people to win. They supported to us, uh, helping us in 90 minutes. This is our target. Written out of the script this season, a main character returned on Wednesday. Mesut Ozil, part of a fully rotated Arsenal team that lost a blockbuster of an EFL Cup game on penalties at Liverpool. It's Arsenal's club policy to not play Ozil that much because they want to sell him. But if you look at the team that they might name against Wolves, if we're not expecting Xhaka to play, there's a really strong argument for Ozil. Danny Ceballos has gone a bit off the boil in recent weeks. Joe Willock is promising, but he's definitely not the finished article. So I think there's no justification for not playing Ozil against Wolves. The visitors to North London also suffered a midweek cup exit, but Wolves are unbeaten in five in the league. And the last instalment between these two didn't make pleasant viewing for Arsenal supporters either. Jota, he'll fancy this. Arsenal have been well and truly taken apart. Entertainment guaranteed if Wolves can deliver again, and they'd also move to within a point of their opponents. Listen, there's never a good time to play anybody. It's, it's two teams going up against each other for three points and we, we know how much Arsenal can hurt you if, if we're not on our game. So we don't look at good times to play teams or when we can play them. We look at going into the game with our game plan, playing the way we can and, and enjoying the game most importantly because it's a great place to go and play football. It really is, but we know how tough it is as well. So it's important we go there with the right, right mentality. I know Wolves are struggling, but what they have is they have a team that's perfectly set up to exploit Arsenal. They're very good, very quick on the counter-attack. I think as much as Arsenal fans might be desperate for a change, the hierarchy is still backing Emery and unless things get a lot worse before the international break, I think we'll be in for a fair few months of Emery yet. Arsenal risk dropping out of the race for a top four place. Leicester's goal difference sees them third ahead of Chelsea. Liverpool still have that six-point lead at the top. Tottenham have slipped out of the top ten. Southampton and Norwich are in the bottom three with Watford. The Hornets still without a win and conditions remain unfavourable. A youthful and vibrant Chelsea side have their sights set on victory at Vicarage Road. There's a lot to like about Leicester City this season. For starters, only Manchester City have scored more. Every time they push forward, it looks as though they're going to score. But there's more. The Foxes have the joint best defensive record too. Schmeichel makes a fine stop. Under Brendan Rodgers, the former title winners have made their best ever start to a Premier League season. I think the squad's better than it's ever been. There's more talent than that they've ever had. Um, I don't think they can get in near the top two because of the sheer number of points that they're going to accrue, but they could end up with more points in 2015, 16. I really do believe they're capable of that because yes, they're fortunate with injuries, but they're not playing in Europe. They, they, you know, they've got a chance to just focus on the league and beating those small teams is a, it's a really big ability. from Leicester City. It was the biggest away victory in, in top flight history. Who would have thought that Leicester, after winning the title in 2015-16, three years on would be creating more records. It's real testament to how that club's got an ability to find new goals, to reinvent itself, um, and a great marker for Brendan Rodgers as well. Great achievement to kind of cement his return to the top flight in England. It's a result that shows what a great team we have and a great friendship we have with each other. Not just on the pitch, but off it as well. The team spirit is very high and it shows how much work we're all putting in. We've already reflected on the performance. It was, it was fantastic um, and you've got to take the real positives from it. 
and there are other areas that we, we could have scored more in. No chance of complacency. We're, uh, we're very focused on, on winning. We've done that in the week, and now we take it into the next league game. A message proclaimed loud, bellowed to the heavens by Leicester City. The most famous of wins, Southampton nil, Leicester City nine. But focused on staying with them are Crystal Palace. In the top six, and having already proved this season that they are capable of troubling the company, they currently keep two. An amazing comeback from Crystal Palace here. 2-2. Two -two. But this is the start of a trio of games which will further test their credentials. First the Foxes, then Frank Lampard's talented young lads, followed by the league leaders. We have a lot of respect for, for Leicester City, we're, we're perfectly aware that they're capable of beating us, you know, and that's not something we want to happen. And we know that they've got that ability to do it, so we're, we're concerned about it. But at least we've got it in our hands to try and do something about it. The sky is the limit for Leicester, but they know regular wins will be the only way to keep pace with the top two. How quickly things can change. Palace more than capable of stifling another Champions League contender at Selhurst Park. Just ten games in, but it's already been a case of ups and downs at the London Stadium. Up to fifth after beating Manchester United, West Ham have slipped following a four-game winless run. It's a beautiful league, says manager Manuel Pellegrini, but even his most threatening player, Andriy Yarmolenko, has seen his edge blunted recently. In the draw with the blade, goalkeeper Roberto Jimenez had to be on his toes. He'll keep his place with Lucas Fabianski out until 2020. I tried uh, before the injury of Lucas. Uh, I, I tried to be ready. And then last month, I adapt myself very quick to, to the competition. Of course, Premier League is the best the best league that I have played and the best league in the world, actually. So I'm enjoying a lot. This is the truth and the main point that, that it's happened all this month. Steve Bruce's Newcastle United edged out of the relegation zone after the draw with Wolves, yet the point came at a cost. Sean Longstaff begins a three-match suspension after his straight red card. Another player who will miss the trip south is defender Fabian Scher, whose ongoing injury keeps him sidelined. No message clearer than the one Sheffield United are sending out to the rest of the top flight. Eighth after ten games, a points return mirrored by three others, including Manchester United. But it's away from Bramall Lane where the Blades have really excelled. They and the leaders Liverpool share common grounds, the only two teams still unbeaten on the road in the league. Replicate that at home and who knows what's next. I think we're in a, a healthy position for us. Um, good points tally. Um, still unbeaten on the road, so you know there's a lot of positives to take. And I think the performances have been very consistent. We haven't been blown away as such by any team. We've, we've been competitive in every single game, which you know is the aim. And I think we've done ourselves justice. And two teams with straight talking managers, but this is the pair's first ever Premier League meeting. Burnley beaten in their last two matches but their powers of recovery have been proved on multiple occasions before. Graham Potter is targeting a hat-trick of home wins in the Premier League when Norwich visit the Amex. Brighton and Hove Albion are 14th, level on points with Tottenham, whom they defeated before the last gasp victory over Everton. Fans could afford to forget the disappointing defeat at Villa sandwiched in between. But away form will come to the fore with three of the four matches following this one on the road. It'll be a case of substance as well as style in the coming weeks. Football's not about style, it's not about um, whether it's good or nice. It's about, ultimately, it's about getting points. So we always have to remember that. But from a, at least a direction of where we're going and, and what we expect um, a, a Brighton team to look like, there's, there's, there's been some progress, I think. Flying at half-mast and travelling at well below that level, Norwich have collected just one point from a possible 15 on the road. 
Daniel Farke has been beset by injuries, but Onel Hernandez is fit again and became the first Cuban to score in the Premier League with his goal against Manchester United. On their travels, though, the Canaries need to flock together and flourish. Ten games in, five points, but no wins for Watford. Opinions divided on where it's gone wrong. It's been a really difficult start for Watford. It hasn't gone to plan at all. And I think, as with any team that's struggling, it's down to, to two or three different factors. I think confidence has been an issue, a bit of luck, and more recently, injuries. They've all combined to make it a really, really tricky, difficult, unexpected and unpleasant start for Watford. I think the fact that we have survived in the Premier League quite comfortably for the previous four seasons means that it has been a bit of a shock. We haven't had a run like this, and I think that has fed to uh, perhaps the confidence of the players. Watford still the only team without a league win this season. Ten games into the season without winning is obviously cause for grave concern, really. Our supporters are coming to terms pretty quickly with the fact that we're in a relegation fight. But we're, we're unified, we're together, we know what needs to be done. There's no reason to think that they can't turn it around. And I think Watford fans are hopeful, if not a little bit nervous. On the face of it, home draws with teams like Bournemouth and Sheffield United may not seem like the greatest of results, but in the context of the season, they actually represent green shoots of recovery for, for this side, and that confidence will start to, to grow as a result of those. All is not lost by, by any stretch of the imagination. There's a core of an excellent team, and they will challenge anyone on their day. It's just they just need to find their feet and find their form and probably find it quickly. It's a very hard time for, for us. We need to, to try to work with other sides, with the other sides we want trying to, to find this first win. We feel much better defending together, defending well, conceding less spaces and less attempts for the opponent and little by little trying to, to get a good balance and it's the most difficult thing in football. If Javi departing wasn't a surprise, Kike coming back really was. I don't think anyone expected that at all, me included. Personally, I think it was probably seen as a, as a short-term fix to save Watford's season, so a big surprise but I understand exactly why he was brought back. Watford created very little in front of goal. We haven't scored enough goals by any stretch of the imagination. Five goals, I think it is in 10 games, tells its own story. So if they can keep it solid defensively, they just absolutely have to start finding the back of the net. We've got big games, Abdullah Decore, Gerard Delefeu, uh, Roberto Pereira, they can all turn a game. They're all capable of, uh, of, of scaring opposition. It doesn't matter if it's a top six side or a bottom three side. These are players who can win matches for Watford. A fit Troy is going to be absolutely instrumental in, in Watford getting out of this if they can. He means so much to not just the supporters, but the players on the pitch. Frank Lampard is going to win four successive league games for the first time in his managerial career. Chelsea won't be satisfied with, with a draw at Watford. They'll be looking to win the game, and that may well play into Watford's hands and the, and the way uh, Kike Sanchez Flores has his team set up. So, am I going to put any money on Watford winning against Chelsea? Not too much, but stranger things have happened, certainly at Watford. You ne never count them out. It should be interesting. It should be interesting to know how we can play with, uh, with Chelsea. We are trying to prepare a good team, a, a good uh, scenario where we are able to win and the fans can feel proud of us. With Frank Lampard as manager, he's a Chelsea legend there, there's going to be no question about everyone there wanting to pull together to play for the boss. So they feel like a real unit, which I don't think has been, been the case in previous seasons. I think we're going to, Watford are going to come up, up against a team who is well drilled, well organised, confident and happy, which I don't think necessarily you've seen in, in Chelsea teams of the past. So a really, really tough time to play Chelsea. We know that the personnel very similar to what they were doing last year and getting big results and regularly being a very strong team and making the FA Cup final. Um, and we cannot underestimate a team that is that will be hurting because of, they haven't won for a while and will have every ambition to try and win this game. So I certainly uh, have even more focus on what we need to do. Ultimately, a win against Chelsea, no matter how unlikely, would breathe huge confidence back into, into the club as a whole. It'd give the players just that much needed confidence. it give them that belief back. We all know they can do it, they know they can do it. These are the matchups that, that Watford's players want to perform in, can perform in. Now they just have to do it. That is the late game on Saturday after the top two have had their say. Villa Park, the stage for Liverpool. Manchester City are at home. On Sunday, Leicester Park before underperforming Everton and Spurs face off. The season's a work in progress, the table a Premier League palette with a familiar blend of red and blue at the top. 
But underneath, there's a rich wash of colours that perhaps you wouldn't expect. Teams hoping their current brilliance won't be a faded memory come May. Others.